everyone, I'm Amy Cavell. This is my business partner, Justin Bozak, and I'm excited to welcome you to episode 11 of our American Dream Show with Remax Revolution. I'm here at the Spring Lake Historical Society Museum with Barbara, president and historian, and we're gonna chat a little bit about the historical aspects of this amazing town. They actually designed it as such a, a wonderful place for visitors to come and for a community to live. And then they kept on that theme of making it the jewel of the Jersey Shore. We came across this. This was more than we wanted to spend, more work than we wanted to do. But it's a historic home in town, and uh, we thought it'd be really important to restore it to its uh, original conditions. Welcome to the American Dream TV. This is a real show, not a reality show, based on lifestyle, culture, and real estate, where we go to your city across the country. I'm your host, Amy Scruggs, and we have a fantastic episode lined up for you, and we're gonna get it started right now. The search is over, baby. I'm right here, and I got it. The American Dream, the only show that combats negative media, not owned by a network, commercial-free, unscripted, These are stories for you and by you. Hey everyone, I'm Amy Cavell. This is my business partner, Justin Bozak, and I'm excited to welcome you to episode 11 of our American Dream Show with Remax Revolution. Today, we're gonna give you a tour of Spring Lake, New Jersey, and go over its incredible history. This town has just a little over two miles of shoreline and has an average medium sale price of 2.3 million with a population year round of just under 3,000. It's no wonder this is a sought after town to own a home in. And right now, we're on 3rd Avenue, downtown Spring Lake. This is the heart in the hub of town with many shops and different restaurants. You've got all different events that happen throughout the year. And we are now proud owners of the building right here on 3rd Avenue. And we're looking forward to showing off our brand new office. Yeah, it's very exciting. But first, we're gonna go check out the Spring Lake Historical Society Museum, meet up with Barbara, the president, and take a deep dive in the unique history of Spring Lake. Okay, everyone, I'm here at the Spring Lake Historical Society Museum with Barbara, president and historian, and we're gonna chat a little bit about the historical aspects of this amazing town. Thank you so much for taking the time to give us this tour, Barbara. Oh, it's my pleasure, and we're very proud of our museum. So when I first toured this museum, I was blown away with the history that was preserved and displayed. You guys did an incredible job with that. I mean, really, it came out magnificent. So I'd love to hear a little bit more about the founding of Spring Lake. Can you share a little bit about that? I certainly can. It would be my pleasure. It was actually started as four resorts before it was actually incorporated into a, a borough. Okay. So the first resort that was founded was by Dr. Willits. He was from Philadelphia, and he was looking for a place to, near the ocean for the sunshine. He was known as a sunshine founder, and he thought the healing powers of the fresh air and the ocean were good. And it was almost like he was looking for a meeting camp uh, as it was established in Ocean Grove. So he came to the shore and he saw a fresh creek pond, which is our lake, Spring Lake, which has no salt water in it and that close to the ocean. So he uh, was able to get investors from Philadelphia and they developed the Osborne Farm. And that became known as Spring Lake Beach. And in Spring Lake Beach, the first thing they did was set up a hotel called the Mammoth House. 1876 was the building of the Mammoth, and right at that point in time, they started uh, uh, forming businesses also to service the people in the cottages. And uh, of course, the railroad had come in, which brought many visitors. So it was now continued down to Bayhead, which made it uh, a very good stop along the way to be in Spring Lake. 
another resort that uh, became developed were the Brightons and North Spring Lake. Uh, they joined together eventually in 1901. The Brightons had one hotel called the Wilberton by the Sea, and that is now what is known as the Breakers. Oh. The uh, original Breakers that was on the ocean had burned down, so they renamed the Wilberton by the Sea the Breakers, and it has lasted till today. And that's one of the few hotels that is still standing and operated as a hotel left in Spring Lake. Also, another resort was Como. That would be the north end of town, and it's what, near what is known as Lake Como. And that developed mostly as uh, large cottages and estate homes. Before development, it was all pine trees and rolling little hills. That all had to be kind of leveled and cleaned out. And then they built the big cottages and the uh, large estates. Well, that's very interesting, hearing how it started out as all these different resorts. And so how did it actually end up becoming Spring Lake Borough? It actually um, was established in 1892, and Spring Lake Beach was the mover in getting it to be an incorporated borough. And part of Villa Park joined in 1892. They found that they needed uh, more than just services for the town, they actually needed a governing body. And the first mayor, he was instrumental in, in moving it forward, and his name was E.B. Patterson a well-known name in town over the years. He had been the station master for Spring Lake Beach. He had also been the carrier, a businessman who uh, transported the people to and from their hotels and, and cottages and stuff. Amazingly, the forefathers of the mayors were actually all businessmen. So they, they knew about the running of a town and so forth, so they were uh, good as a governing body. And they knew what they wanted uh, Spring Lake to be. So um, uh, first mayor was E.B. Patterson, as I said. And then after that, uh, the Brightons and North Spring Lake and Como did not join until 1903. And then in 1904, O.H. Brown, who had been the actual mayor of the resort, they were annexed to Spring Lake Beach, and so it became Spring Lake. So now everybody's in the fold by 1903 uh, as what we know as Spring Lake today. What we'd like to remember about the Founding Fathers was that they actually designed it as such a, a wonderful place for visitors to come and for a community to live. And then the, the mayors following them just kept on that theme of making it the jewel of the Jersey Shore. And that's what we are known as. We've been called the jewel of the Jersey Shore. So through the years then, they turned it into more uh, full-time residents in the town. And then they made it a family town. And then of course, visitors always wanted to come anyway. So it has the best of both worlds. I can definitely agree with you on that. I mean, there's no question Spring Lake has that, that jewel aspect. Um, it's one of those towns that everyone wants to be at. It's clean, it's, it's beautiful, the beaches are fantastic, the people are wonderful, and uh, the Founding Fathers did a great job building it to where it is today. So now we talked a little bit about the founding of the town. I know one of the integral parts of the history of Spring Lake is the Mammoth Hotel, which is now present day Mama Shire Estates. Can you share a little bit about the history of the Mammoth Hotel? Uh, certainly. Um, it's known as the grandest hotel. It was the largest. But before that was the Mammoth House, which I had mentioned under Spring Lake Beach founding. The first uh, hotel that went up was the Mammoth House. And unfortunately, it was destroyed by the big, huge fire of 1900. That fire started in one of the Hastings Square cottages. The fire spread because it was fanned by winds. It spread south, hit the, burned the Mammoth Hotel, burned the businesses around the lake, and then headed south also. So it was finally stopped before it reached the Allaire Hotel, which was the farthest south hotel in Spring Lake Beach. Then in 1901, Investors from the Spring Lake Seagirt Land Company, under the direction of O.H. Uh, Brown, they 
sold bonds and rebuilt the uh, hotel in a much grander style and is what you see in this picture. It was the largest hotel uh, along the Jersey Shore and it also was made of brick because they learned their lesson from the Mammoth House burning so quickly, you know, being along the ocean. It became so well known that people would come in the summer, stay, very fashionable, uh, large ballrooms, large dining rooms. So it was truly was the Grand Hotel. And it sat, of course, at the foot of Spring Lake, Lake, and also the ocean. So it had views on both sides. Unfortunately, the Mammoth Hotel could not sustain its grandness and largeness, and people were not coming uh, all year long because it wasn't open in the winter. So in 1975, it was torn down. And that is what uh, led to the development then of the Mama Shire Estates, which are private homes in the same um, block that the Mammoth Hotel sat. So Barbara, one of the things I wanted to chat with you about, which is incredible history on Spring Lake, is the cruise ship Moore Castle disaster um, and the integral part that the first aid squad had in rescuing a lot of lives. So I'd love to have you share with us a little bit about what happened there. Uh, yes, the unfortunately that disaster ended up on our shores part of it. There were 558 people aboard that cruise ship that was running from Cuba to New York. And um, it caught on fire after the captain had died from whatever causes they're not sure. They think it was a heart attack, and the acting captain decided he make, wanted to make a run for it to get to New York, I guess because of the, the captain's uh, circumstances. So he made a run for it and then it caught on fire, and it, it spread very quickly. And 113 people ended up on Spring Lake and part of Seagirt's shores. Doctors, residents, volunteers, everybody came out to help with these people's, to save these people's lives. Some interesting stories came from the doctors, one of which I distinctly remember was Mrs. Cavanaugh. She was a socialite in New York and high up in society, big opera or big volunteer. Uh, go. This was her summer home and she actually went down to the beach in her furs and jewels and gave blankets to the people coming in to, to keep them warm. And she also made her way over to the first aid station, uh, which is now known as Duggan Hall. That building was saved from destruction. And uh, she brought over spirits <laughs> to keep the people warm. So there are stories that came out of this awful disaster that, you know, are well known in town or kept alive in history. Barbara, I, I can't thank you enough for giving us this amazing tour on this museum and giving us the history of Spring Lake. Um, it's the museum itself and how everything is displayed and preserved is fantastic. So thank you again. Oh, you're welcome. My pleasure. Hey guys, so we're at the Swanhurst house now, and we're right across from Spring Lake. This house was originally built in 1896, and it was restored just recently by the owners, Lou and Tammy. So we're gonna take you for a behind the scenes tour so you can see the renovation. All right guys, so thanks for letting us uh, take a tour of your home. Do you guys want to go over the just historical value of it and what made you jump into doing a renovation on such an old home? I'll let you take that one. So our kids were looking for, they were in college and they were looking for um, a summer house. I said, well, we're going to do a summer house. We got to do it in Spring Lake because that's where your grandparents are and all your cousins. And so as we looked in, around in town, uh, we came across this. This was more than we wanted to spend, more work than we wanted to do, but it's a historic home in town. And uh, we thought it'd be really important to restore it to its uh, original condition. So we took it on. Right. Well, obviously, there's not that many homes with a view like this. 
Yeah. No, and it was very unique because it hadn't traded since 1960, and I thought if we can get control of it, it wouldn't trade for another 60 years. And so to have an asset like this would be pretty important generationally. So what are some, some of your favorite things about the house? Well, the, the house is the epitome of Spring Lake. I mean, um, you've got lots of bedrooms um, for entertaining family and friends. Um, you're by, by all the bodies of water, being the lake and being the ocean. And uh, you've got a huge front porch, which is great for entertaining. And that's essentially the essence of, of Spring Lake. It's about the bodies of water, it's about the porch, and it's about the families and, and, and hosting them and entertaining. So we affectionately call this room the woman's parlor. We use this room a lot in the colder months. Um, so you still capture the view of the lake that you would get if you were on the porch. We've got this fireplace, which when we bought the house was not working, but we did restore it and made it a working gas fireplace. So this is a very comfortable room, very cozy in the winter months with a great view and the nice, uh, nice warm fire. So this room we affectionately call the men's smoking room. And there was a belief that back in the day you would have your dinner in the dining room, which we'll show you soon. And the men would retreat to this room. The women would be in the front parlor. And we have these great pocket doors that we've restored uh, that you can just shut each other off if you want. And so with regards to the pocket doors, when we had them restored, the restorer said, I asked them, when was the last time they were used? He said, they haven't been used since the Truman administration in the 40s. So he's very excited to work on those. This is the formal dining room and we kept it formal. This is all original woodwork here. And so we restored these cabinets. Um, you know, a lot of wonderful moldings and touches that are, you know, in them, all the original glass. Uh, we replaced all the light fixtures. Uh, the furniture in here is old. I mean, this is from like 1820. Um, I had it restored and um, recovered. Um, so every piece that you see in here uh, originally was originally with the house. Um, so I look at this room and I really, I love it because it's one of the rooms that sort of, I kept the same, but just totally updated everything. Wow guys, this looks like uh, an addition. This is all brand new. This is all brand new and this is the bulk of the work in, in the renovation. So. Mm -hmm. We have kind of three or four elements here. Number one, this room right here was the sunroom, which was just simply bolted onto the exterior of the house sometime in the 70s. And so the exterior house wall went right along here, including the window and oh, wow. a few other things. And so, you know, what we did was we put a big steel beam up here and then blew this thing out and, and replaced this whole sunroom area. We added a fireplace, and then, but it really opened up into the kitchen. And that was the main area back there, and we've obviously put the island in, updated all the appliances. And then on the other side of the room, uh, where we have the table, that was uh, like an outdoor deck where the garbage was. And so we enclosed that, made that a nice little breakfast nook, and made this one big you know, living, uh, living space. Wow, I mean, this is super creative. It looks like it's very, uh, very used. This it is feels used. like the homey part of the house right, right here. Obviously, it's all fresh. It's all new. Uh, definitely gives it a different feel and vibe than a lot of the uh, the older homes. Yeah, and we maintained a view of the lake here, which is right. which is really Gorgeous. Been pretty special, and you know, the, arguably the most important part of the house. Yeah, so this is a master bedroom. We kept all the um, original closets, which is, uh, gives us plenty of room to spoil, store lots of clothes. And then we've got the master bath here in the back, which was another th a room that we had uh, completely redone. All right, great. And I see you have a, an area over there. What's, what's this over here? Yeah, so that's formerly the woman's changing room. And she had a little vanity and a toilet over there, which we um, both took out and made, put, in a full, put in a full bath and uh, made it more of a kind of a second family room, second media room for the, uh, for the second floor. Oh, great. And I see, I guess that's the way to get out onto the, uh, the balcony right here? Yes, right. our sky deck. Sky deck. The sky deck. 
So this is what we affectionately call the sky deck. We usually have out here four rocking chairs and a chaise lounge, which we use for cocktails and naps. And uh, we think it's one of the best views in all of Spring Lake and we enjoy it immensely. So that's the last thing I can really say about the indoor in part, inside part of the house or, or the property. But, uh, um, you know, we have had a terrific experience here and, you know, we think it's not quite typical of all the houses in Spring Lake, but a lot of them have the water access, the large bedrooms, big porches, room for lots of entertaining and, uh, and lots of family and friends. Yeah, no, this is great. I mean, uh, the ornate columns and I mean, the sky, obviously on the, on the ceiling, I think, right. you know, that's yeah. why you call it the sky deck. It's the yep. sky deck. The yep. blue ceiling. This yep. is great. Do you like the way you love? Distance from above, dignified. Okay, so um, one of the outdoor features here um, was back in the day, many of the houses had an outdoor baking hut. So if you had a fire, you didn't dirt burn down the main house, you just burned down the baking hut. Um, and so when we bought the house, the baking hut was, was, a, was still here. Um, but we had to build a garage and Spring Lake only allows you to have two structures on a lot. So unfortunately we had to take the baking hut down. But we did keep the chimney as a memory to the, to the baking hut's legacy, which we're gonna ultimately integrate into an outdoor uh, barbecue area or, or an outdoor kind of fire pit. Uh, the other notable things on the landscaping was um, we put over 2,000 daffodil bulbs on the property, about 1,500 of which are in the front crescent, just to give the house a pop of color in the spring. And uh, as every for everybody that's driving by, just a little quick uh, early reminder that spring is here, spring is coming, and uh, things are looking up. Great, I mean, uh, Spring Lake, Spring, the yep. lake, the yep. lake. Yep. everything ties in here. I mean, amazing job, guys. Um, Congratulations. I mean, this is a, this is now a landmark, right? In yeah. town. I know just driving by, I'm going to be looking forward to, to seeing the tulips this year. Right. And uh, thank you for your time. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Today, we are going to give you a tour of Aria's latest project in Wall Township, Rolling Hills Estates. And we're also going to bring you through one of their models called the Ensor model. Top-notch finishes throughout this house. Four or five bedrooms, depending on what floor plan you want to do. Wrap-around porch, a ton of nice features that you won't see in a normal new construction home. We're going to give you a tour of this historic place called Alaire State Park. Alaire State Park is about 3,300 acres, which was founded early in the 1900s. You can also do camping here, weddings, photography. This state park truly offers so much. Welcome to 10 Autumn Avenue in Jackson, offered at 950,000. The luxury lifestyle you deserve awaits you here on Autumn Avenue. The owner has spared no expense with the finishes from the backyard being turned into a resort to the full update and renovation of the baths, the flooring, brand new kitchen with huge 12 foot island, dual wine coolers and all newer appliances. This home has it all, including a full basement with materials included to finish it. Contact Justin Bozak for more information. Next up, we have 92 Sunset Avenue in Toms River, offered at 550,000. This is a rare opportunity to purchase an expanded ranch situated on an oversized lot. The exterior features a large detached garage that can be used as a storage building with tons of space for extra parking. The exterior also features an in-ground pool with a nice deck for entertaining. Interior features an owner suite with a jetted tub along with a sauna and a full basement. 
There's tons of potential here. For more information, contact Justin Bozak. And now we head down to Manilokan, where you'll find 123 Doville Drive, a brand new construction, four bed, three and a half bath home, offering 2,700 square feet, a two car garage, an elevator, and room for a pool, asking just 1.5 million, where you're a block to the ocean and also a block to the bay. Any questions, contact myself, Justin Bozak, or Aaron Tabella. to 2438 Rolling Hills Way in Manasquan, offered at $2 million. Brand new community in Wall Township. This cul-de-sac lot features the Ensor model. This masterpiece includes full wraparound porch, five bedrooms, three and a half bathrooms, full walkout basement, three car garage, magnificent trim work throughout, enormous open kitchen with massive center island, two sinks, quartz countertops, and tile backsplash. First floor master suite with two huge walk-in closets, an attached full bath with dual sink vanity, tub, and frameless shower. Don't miss out on this once in a lifetime opportunity. Contact Abram Cavella or Justin Bosak for more information. Next up, we have 2450 Rolling Hills Way in Manasquan, offered at 1,350,000. Brand new community in Wall Township. This Cambridge 3 model offers five bedrooms, four full bathrooms, two car garage, full walkout basement. Interior has hardwood flooring and 10 foot ceilings on the first floor. Gorgeous custom trim and paint throughout. The kitchen boasts 42 inch custom cabinets, granite or quartz countertops, tile backslash, center island and pantry. Master includes enormous walk-in closet, gas fireplace, and attached full bath with dual sink vanity, shower stall, and soaking tub. Come see this today. Contact Justin Bozak or Abram Cavella for more information. We hope you enjoyed this latest episode of the American Dream TV where we featured the best in lifestyle, culture, and real estate. Make sure and follow us on social media and engage with us in the conversation. We'd love to hear from you. I'm your host, Amy Scruggs, and we look forward to seeing you next time. But in the meantime, cheers to your American dream. This show is designed for you, and it's really by you. This is where I want to be. To show you what makes our areas great, our neighborhoods, our lifestyles, our culture, and yes, our real estate. Our real estate market is hotter than ever. It's a positive show, a real show. I love selling homes.